In cybersecurity, one of the questions I get all the time is, what's the difference between blue team and the red team? And more importantly, which one should you go for? You've probably heard people say online, I'm blue team or I'm red team. But what do they actually mean? When I first got into this field, I had no clue either. But after working in cybersecurity for a while, I realized the work and mindset between these two teams are totally different. There's the blue team, the defenders. They protect the network, they observe the logs, they respond to incidents, and they try to stop breaches before they happen. And then there's the red team, the ethical hackers. They try to find weaknesses before bad actors do. These two different teams matter a lot. They attract different personalities, and the daily work is different too. So in this video, I'll explain both sides, what a day in life looks like, the tools you'll be using, and how they work together in real life. And when we talk about the red team, I'll show you a hands-on demo on how you can try it yourself that's great for the beginners. Alright, let's start with the blue team. The blue team is the defensive side of cybersecurity. They're the ones that get alerted when something strange happens. Imagine you're in a SOC, a security operations center, and you have multiple monitors and dashboards all showing your alerts all at the same time, and your Splunk courage just showed an unusual login from overseas. The user's in Australia, so why is this login from an IP in another country? So you start your investigation, you check the login logs, you look at the timestamps, you check where the device last authenticated, and you run the IP through threat intel feed like virus total or abuse IPDB. If the IP address is malicious, that changes things fast. You isolate the account, you revoke the active sessions, you block the IP address, then you start tracing if anyone else had the same suspicious login. That's your immediate containment, but you don't stop there. You search the user's mailbox for phishing emails, you check on the OneDrive and the SharePoint activity for file access. You want to know how big this attack is, essentially who else could be affected. Blue team work is part detective, part engineer. You fine tune alerts to reduce noise, you create playbooks to automate responses, and you build detection rules so the same incident gets caught earlier next time. If you like problem solving, looking at data, and fixing things under pressure, then blue team is a great fit. It can be kind of stressful sometimes because attacks and alerts don't really care about time zones, but if you stop an attack early, then that's kind of satisfying. So what do blue teamers actually use? Mainly a seam like Splunk or Sentinel where all the logs come together. And then they also have EDR tools like CrowdStrike or Defender that show you what's happening on the endpoints. You might also use Wireshark for packet captures and PowerShell or Python for automation. But the real skill is investigative thinking. You have to be asking the right questions, like why did this happen? What else could it affect? Good blue teamers look for small clues and then connect them into a clear picture. Soft skills are very important as well because you need to communicate incidents to non-technical people and you also need to write reports and work with other teams to remediate the incident. Alright, so that's the defensive side of cybersecurity. Let's flip it over to the red team. Red teamers are the hands-on legal attackers. They run realistic tests to see how fast someone could get into a network. A typical rate team engagement starts with a recon or reconnaissance. You gather public information like what tech a company uses, the exposed services, leak credentials and so on. Then you try to get an initial attack, maybe through a phishing email or a vulnerable web application. Once you're in, you attempt to move laterally, you escalate privileges, you access sensitive data, all while measuring whether detection happened and how fast the blue team reacted. If you want to try that in a safe way, that's a great option. Try Hack Me, which is the sponsor of this video. Try Hack me is a browser-based training platform where you can do realistic labs, no setups, no VMs, no risk. One lab I use when I teach people about Red Team Basics is the Offensive Security Intro. It puts you into a bank simulation, they call it Fake Bank, and your job is to discover hidden functionality. You start the lab, you launch the attack box in your browser, you open the terminal and you run a simple command. Derp is a tool that brute forces web directories, it checks common names, finds pages that aren't linked anywhere. As it runs, you'll see results like images, usually just static files, but then it might find something interesting like bank deposit. That bank deposit endpoint is a secret page that the normal website doesn't show. In this lab, the endpoint lets you add money to your account, which is good for the simulation. Why this lab works so well, everything runs in the browser, so you can experiment and reset the machine anytime you want. You can break things, you can learn why they broke, and try again. That's how practical learning sticks. Try Hack Me also have millions of learners, so you're not doing this alone. And Echo, their AI tutor, helps you when you get stuck. So you don't have to spend hours being blocked on a specific scenario. If you want to try this lab, there's a link in the description or you can use the code JOHNO25 for 25% off the annual plan. Or you can just jump right in to try for free to see what it's like. Alright, that demo shows how red teamers think. Find hidden things, try small attacks, and learn from the results. Now let's look at what happens after the engagement like this. 
After a red team test, the real work starts. The blue team takes the findings and improves detection and response. The red team shows how to get in, the blue team closes those gaps. Sometimes organizations run purple team exercises, so that means both sides are doing live collaboration. Red team attacks in the controlled conditions while blue team monitors and tune detections in real time. They compare notes after, they patch issues and then they repeat. This loop is how teams actually get better. So it's not a contest where one side wins, it's a cycle where each side helps each other out. So you might be wondering what roles you can get into in cybersecurity. On the blue side, you have the SOC analyst, the threat hunter, incident response, detection engineer, and security engineer. On the red team side, you have pen testers, red team operator, security researcher, and exploit developer. If you're just starting out, a lot of people get into cybersecurity through blue team and that's through help desk or system admin, and then go into SOC. These roles teach you systems and give you the logs to go through. Some people might jump into red team by learning hands-on platforms like TryHackMe or participating in Capture the Flags. The important thing here is the skills that you learn are transferable to either blue team or the red team. Understanding attacks make you a better defender and understanding defense makes you a better attacker. So try not to stress too much about picking one role or one team and think that's permanent. You gotta start somewhere where you can learn the fastest. If you want a few quick tips to get started, then learn the basics of networking and Linux. And you need to get comfortable reading logs, so that's through Splunk or something similar. You gotta practice searching and filtering the logs, and try do one lab a week on TryHackMe. If you do small regular learning sessions, that's gonna build up into a big knowledge base for you. And try to keep track of everything you've done in your learning, because that becomes your portfolio. So after hearing all that, you might be wondering which team is better. Honestly, it's neither. They're both essential. Blue teams stop attacks and keep systems running, red teamers find gaps to help prevent breaches, and together they make security practical and resilient. And if you like to break systems and find gaps in the security, then try the red team path. Anyway, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it insightful. Thanks for watching.